Good morning, PTI Nice folks. Here at the airport, Mitch Babcock, Alan Frenendahl. Good morning. Good morning. We are uh, Fitness Athlete Friday. Thanks for tuning in. If you're checking the podcast, uh, we're sorry for the audio. You're going to hear some people walking in the background. Um, if you're Facebook Live, thanks for hanging out with us. Alan and I are waiting for our flight. It's going to board in about, I don't know, 20 minutes. Um, heading out to D.C. this weekend to do a Fitness Athlete Live course out in Washington, D.C. I'm super excited about that and um, MedStar group, so it should be a really fun time. But we are here this morning hanging out at the terminal, and uh, we're going to talk about some WHOOP data. WHOOP WHOOP! We, uh, Alan and I, Alan mostly, um, Alan got started with the WHOOP fitness activity tracker um, probably, what, three weeks ago? Three, a month ago. A month ago now, yep. okay. And then um, another member of our gym and myself picked it up probably a week or two after that. And so we've been uh, playing around with some, good morning, Allie, good to see you. Uh, we've been playing around with some initial data of the WHOOP. Uh, trying to track our sleep, our recovery, our activity level, um, and helping to correlate some of this data around heart rate variability that we keep talking about quite often. So, Alan has the app pulled up on his phone. I can't pull it up because I'm talking to you guys. Uh, but we're just basically going to share some initial uh, thoughts about it, what we find it useful for, what what information it's shared with us so far that's kind of uh, modified our training so far. Alan and I are both trained CrossFit, so if that gives you some context, obviously Fitness Athlete Friday, that's what we're talking about, gives you some context about our training load, how many days a week we're training, sleep, and then also trying to manage work and other activities of daily life in there. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over. I'm not going to turn it over. We're going to have a conversation here. Alan, what, uh, having got Whoop a month ago, what are your initial thoughts after picking it up and, and wearing it? Um, just being able to see what my heart rate variability actually is has been very important in determining when I take a rest day, how much I train that day, where before I kind of went off just how I felt. And uh, even when there were days where I felt okay, I definitely didn't feel okay after, which, you know, that probably should have been a rest day, but I didn't have that objective data in front of me. So it's helped me plan rest days better when I look on the app and I see uh, what my recovery is. It's very user friendly. It tells you how much sleep you need based on how much activity you've had that day. So in the evening, you'll get a cool notification that says, hey, you need nine hours and 52 minutes of sleep tonight. So sleep is another thing that has helped uh, that I've gotten help with from Whoop, um, just knowing that I'm definitely not getting enough sleep, um, eight, nine, ten hours, not not getting close uh, some nights. So you know, where before I would say six or seven hours, you know, <clears throat> it killed it. Um, but now knowing how much I train CrossFit, that I need much more sleep, and that I'm not getting it, and Whoop, uh, Whoop kindly reminds me every morning that I did not get enough sleep, and to, to try harder again the next night. So. Pull up the uh, pull up the sleep score on this because this has been super enlightening to me. So what we're going to show you next is how this reports on the, the app. So uh, this is the sleep screen. So you got three screens: a general overview, where you look at um, strain, cardiovascular strain, your activity, um, sleeping, um, and then recovery. So strain is just based on heart rate. Um, how high did your heart rate get? How many calories did you burn with activity? So this is from a few weeks ago when I ran a 10 mile road race. So you can see my strain is almost maxed out. Whoop rate strain from zero to 21, 21 being the max. So with uh, a 10 mile road race, I hit 19.5. So I pretty much maxed out 170 max heart rate, 167 average heart rate for the day. Um, or sorry, 66 average heart rate. And then I burned 5,284 calories. And then if we look at the next screen, recovery is going to show you your HRV data. So my HRV waking up the morning before the race was 71, so pretty good. Norms for, for my age group, someone, someone between 30 and 40, want to be around 60 to 80. So doing good there. My resting heart rate was 49. I took a rest day the night before, and then I got 7 hours and 22 minutes of sleep. So for me, did well on sleep. I know this is this might be backwards for some of you. So I got an 89% on recovery. And if I look at sleep from the night before, 81% sleep. Whoop tells me I needed nine hours and nine minutes. I got seven hours and 22 minutes. And what I really like about this is at the bottom here, that's not showing up well at all. Um, okay, it'll show, it around for him. it'll show, is it picking it up? Yep. So it'll show time in bed. Um, and then it'll show disturbances, so how many times you woke up, and each time you woke up, how many minutes did it take you to fall back asleep? So this has been key for me um, because you know you might lay down for eight hours, but it doesn't mean you get eight hours of sleep. With disturbances and latency and different types of sleep, um, light, REM, and deep, um, you might not get 
the sleep that you think you're getting. And then what I think is really cool is if I look at the next day, so this is a day after that road race. Um, I took it, uh, actually did CrossFit that day, shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> I did a Sunday in the garage for APHBT. Um, so I probably should have taken a rest day that day. Um, I did a, I, I forget what I did here. I did a, a, like a 20 minute Metcon. And then, but if you look at my recovery, you can see uh, bottomed out. So following the road race, HRV plummeted, resting heart rate increased, and my sleep went down a little bit. So uh, Sunday should have been a rest day based on this data, and I didn't do it because I wanted to get uh, uh, in the garage episode out. So I should have taken a rest day here. And then if we look the next Monday, things start to improve slightly. Um, and I think I took, did take a rest day this day. So you can see with the data, yeah, I, I didn't go too hard this day. So you can see through the data after a heavy event um, of strain, recovery, and sleep, how WHOOP can kind of guide um, your balance between exercise, recovery, and sleep um, in an objective an objective manner. Can you go back to the road race Saturday Yep. and look at your heart rate variability leading into that morning? So recovery, this is the morning before the race, heart rate variability there, uh, green light in the 71. That's that's really, really good. Um, and now flash, flash forward to like Sunday or Monday, either one, and look at that same recovery score. And now we've plummeted down to a 31. So this is the information that we've been trying to seek, is like these variations in heart rate variability and are the, this red light indicator of like, hey, listen, things have changed. I mean, we've dropped from a 75 down to a 31 in a matter of a couple days based on the workload that you've put on or put out over the last weekend or so. And this is this is the red light indicator of like, hey, pause, try to get more sleep, try to take it easy on some of your training. Don't push for a PR today. Don't go in the gym and try to max out a deadlift or try to you know PR your friend time. These are the days that you may want to do a slow active recovery or get out of the gym and get out of the gym entirely and do some more active recovery right you can you can see a lot more data on the website too or uh, I have Android and I'm learning just time and time again that Android is not robust uh, on Mitch's iPhone app he can turn his screen and he'll see the same charts that I have to log into on the website to see on Android but it will actually plot this data for you over time so you can look at the past 30 days and you can watch your heart rate variability go up and down your resting heart rate your strain your sleep and you can start to plot kind of your training load over time which traditionally has been difficult. We've we've had to you know crunch it with spreadsheets, but now it's much more user friendly, um, easier to see, easier to track, and I think if we start to follow this pretty rigidly, um, we can start to use devices like this to to predict and prevent injury. Just looking at um, activity load, load management, recovery, sleep, and strain, and all those kind of uh, variables, how they play out together, and how we should um, push or pull out. Uh, of training based on how we're performing. I, just to, another point, I, I love looking at the data from my own training. So I train five days a week, three of which are longer, more intense sessions, weightlifting, Metcon, and accessory work. Two days a week are just Metcon and accessory work. They're a little shorter uh, with two rest days sprinkled in during the week. So I like to look at my data in terms of how I'm training. Um, it will automatically pick up on an activity wave, right? So it'll as it's tracking my heart rate throughout the day, it knows that at 10.35 I started an exercise session because my heart rate elevated uh, significantly and was withstood for you know duration of time and it will plot that and then when I log back into my whoop app it could be three or four hours later it pulls that up and it says hey log some information from your training session today that was two and a half hours in length or however long it was you can you can log in there you're rating a perceived exertion you can log in there how did you perform was it soft was it passable did you go pretty hard you know did you train pretty well so you can log all that information after a sleep cycle you get all the same subjective data as well did you drink caffeine too many hours before bed did you share your bed with someone did you uh, were you yeah were you on your screen were you stressed things of that nature so it's picking up on all those subjective and objective reports that we continue to find that correlate uh, to your recovery and also correlate to potential injury right so for athletes who are serious about their training who are looking at this data and are trying to push the needle as hard as they can without uh, running into running into issues or running into injury, data like this is super, super helpful because it's going to monitor all that for you. Uh, what is it, 100 metrics per 100, minute? 100 data points per second. 
100 data Avant. points per second. It's Body temperature, heart rate variability, heart rate, acceleration, um, and using acceleration for both activity and to determine when you're asleep and how your movement is during your sleep, whether you're in deep sleep, uh, light sleep, or REM sleep. A lot of metrics. Um, down Downsides to it so far. Um, for me, it's just been uh, staying on my dang wrist. I um, it, It's got a, uh, you can see here, it's got like a thin neoprene band, and I actually have the charger pack on it right now. That's why it looks so big. Alan does not. Um, and he has a like an aftermarket band which holds on his wrist a little bit better than mine does. So I'm struggling right now. I've lost a couple nights of recovery data because I I push my hand under the pillow and it knocks the, the monitor off my wrist and so I'll, I'll lose like three or four hours in the middle of the night and it'll tell me I only slept for two and a half hours when I know I slept more than that. So I need to get a little uh, an aftermarket band like Alan has so that it stays on my wrist a little bit better. Um, uh, that you think battery life is is pretty terrible um it lasts about a day maybe a day and a half and then like mitch mitch has the battery pack on now it's the whoop is meant to stay on your wrist forever you're never supposed to take it off um so the battery pack clips over it and charges it on the go so that you don't have to take it off so you know if you want to get serious about using it for data gathering then you have to commit to pretty much wearing this thing all the time um they recommend that you don't even take it off in the shower you just you know it's got a breathable band so you just scrub it in the shower and you basically never take it off swim in it everything wear it for the rest of your life as long as you want to track this data so it kind of can feel like uh, you're chained to it um, especially if you're not used to wearing a watch um, or anything on your wrist so battery life and then just always having it on are, are some pretty big cons I'd like to see the battery life be maybe three days um, so that you're not charging it every day like Mitch's was dead uh, just between leaving his house this morning and getting here to the airport so we couldn't even look at his data because it, it had died that fast overnight the other you can see that I wear a watch uh, a I also wear watch. watch so yeah. now I got two two wrist things so the other downfall is that yeah we, we're wearing double wrist garments here and um, if it just had if it just had a, a way to tell time I really don't need anything why more are fancy. you wearing two watches yeah, is what I hear every day if I just had a way to tell time, then I could omit my other watch. But um, as of now, I got to. If that's the biggest issue, then it's not really a big issue. But um, just some practical implications from wearing it. I really like the data. It's been very enlightening to me to see my training and also to see my sleep. And I get into so we train hard Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. And I have some early. I have some long days in the gym that start early in the morning and, and finish late at night. And by Wednesday's training session, I'm usually feeling pretty tired uh, my desire to train is very low um, and I can look back at my sleep and it's like dude you may have been in bed for six hours but you only had 37 minutes of deep REM sleep and you had like four and a half hours of very light sleep right so it's letting me know that like my sleep quality is not all that great and after a couple two three days of that my recovery starts to go down and that's why you know it's correlating with my desire to train is just not I'm just not really feeling it. I'm not really feeling like going hard, but we've got a big session on tap for us anyways. So things like that are making me more conscious day by day that even if I lay in bed for six hours, I may not be getting six hours of sleep, right? And so I need to do better about my sleep hygiene, trying to downregulate at night, trying to get myself to fall asleep and stay asleep longer, um, things of that nature, if it matters to me about uh, being able to train and being able to perform in the gym. So um, anything else you didn't, we didn't mention? Uh, just the cost. I saw there's a question about the cost. Um, this thing used to be like 750 bucks cash, and then it came down a bit. And now they got smart. They switched to a subscription-based model. So it's 15 bucks for the band, and then it's 30 bucks a month uh, with a minimum six-month commitment. So um, not too pricey. Um, you know, 30 bucks a month is not too bad. Um, you should spend that on a virtual ice, which registration closes Tuesday. Um, <laughs> But 30 bucks a month, you know, over time, you after a year or two, you've more than paid for what it used to cost. My, my biggest regret is not buying this with cash sooner and not being tethered to the subscription because now if I want to keep using this, I'll definitely pay more than 500 bucks over the course of the next few years. Check it out. That's Whoop, W-H-O-O-P, Whoop Whoop. Um, you'll find more information like this, heart rate variability and more with that virtual ice that we're talking about, guys. So. Um, the next time to jump into that, that closes what, this week? Yep, it'll close September Monday 11th? night to start Tuesday with Tuesday session. Tuesday session, so it closes Monday night. If you haven't jumped into Virtualize, uh, one lecture a week, all year long, 
delivered to your house, watch it on your couch in gym shorts if you want to. Like, there's no better way to do that. So uh, check out Virtual Ice. Um, if you guys got questions about Whoop Data, uh, hit up Alan. He's the man. I'm also tracking it and posting some stuff on my Instagram as I go as I find out more information on this. Um, we're, we got to catch a plane. They're starting to board soon. So we're going to fly out to D.C., have a good time. Follow us along on Instagram. we got a little bit of time today. We're going to check out the Capitol, walk around a little bit, and uh, have some good time and then have a blast teaching this weekend. So with that, it's Friday. You guys have an awesome weekend. Go crush it in the clinic, and we'll see you back here on Monday morning. Take Go care. Blue. Go Blue. Go Blue.